How you doing guys? It's Luke from LukeCurtis.co.uk. Learn photography for free, which is pretty cool. So my YouTube channel is all about learning photography for free. Of course, you can go out and you can spend money on workshops and you can pay for lectures and things like that. But I learned most of everything I know from YouTube, just sitting down, applying some time, taking away what I've learned and, and practicing effectively. So I thought I'm now at a point in my career where I can give something back. So I've created a YouTube channel dedicated to that. So please subscribe if you would like to learn more about photography. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is portfolios and the importance of portfolios. So it's massively important to have a portfolio in both digital version and also a tangible version, I mean print. Now digital of course because it's so accessible, everybody who's got a mobile phone will have access to your portfolio, which is great in terms of building your brand and trying to get out there. The problem with it is digital is quite disposable and my reference point for that is if you look at the transition from film photography to digital photography, film photographers, they only had a set amount of times to be able to get it right on a certain film canister. If they didn't get it right, that was it, it was a waste of money. So they were super efficient at the ability to be able to take pictures. They really learned how to shoot in manual because they wanted total control to make sure they were 100% accurate or as close to 100% accurate as many times as possible. So there was no wastage. And, and, and that's why film photographers will always go on about, oh, you know, back in our day it was so different. And I fully respect them for that, of course. With digital, it's uncapped you know you can literally have as many attempts as you possibly want to shoot something you know go and get a you know a 128 gig memory card you know 256 gig memory card and just literally shoot away to your heart's content until you get it right now i'm not a massive fan of that style i would rather you know apply my technical ability to a shoot and get it right you know and, and sort of adjust very marginally within sort of the, the first benchmarking rather than shoot a hundred million shots and come away with a couple of things. I would call that a snapper. So having a printed portfolio is very similar to film photography in a way. It's because it's tangible, you know, it's real. It's not so disposable as digital is. And when you turn up to a client meeting, you've got a choice. You can turn up with an iPad and you can show them a load of pictures or you can show them on your mobile phone or you can show them on a laptop. I personally would always turn up with a printed portfolio as well as the digital version. And the reason I would do that is because there's more care and thought and goes to it. And when they're turning those pages, you know, premium paper, it's super matte finish, it's got value to it, you know, it's value, it has a beginning and it has an end. And, and it's really, really well thought about. So for me personally, I would always have a printed portfolio. Now, that comes very handy because there's a company which you can see scrolling across behind me, which are called Sal Digital, um, S-A-A-L, dash digital.co.uk. Now these guys had an offer on Facebook to print a free portfolio. I've used them previously before. So I've got a couple of portfolios. So I've got this one here, if you can see it. Uh, sorry, the sunlight's bleeding in, so it's kind of bleaching everything. There we go. This is a portfolio, I've got that one. And I've got this guy here, um, which is one of my really, really, really early portfolios. Not great in terms of the content. I didn't really have an idea of what I was doing. I just put together a some images that I liked effectively. So I've been using these guys for a while and I'm very happy with the quality that they print the books in. So their offer came about to print a free one. I was like, this is amazing, okay, fantastic. I'll jump on that bandwagon. I sent them my details and they said, oh, we're actually gonna give you more money. So they gave me a higher value voucher to be able to print a more in-depth portfolio. Phenomenal, you know, I've got more scope and more freedom to, to play with and produce um, a better portfolio. So I decided to produce a portfolio based on my portrait work with artists in the, the dance music industry. So I shoot live events and I've got a portfolio for my live events and I've got another one which is kind of a mishmash of stuff. And I would always turn up with the right portfolio based on the client. So if I'm going to win some business for a new festival or something like that, I would take the live events. If I'm going to go sit down with an artist management team, obviously I'm going to take this new one. So in terms of the quality from these guys, amazing like so so happy i always go for a matte finish on the pages i just think it adds you know when it's highly reflective in certain situations when you're looking at it it's not great you know as i'm leaning forward you can see the sunlight on me that's you know it's not a good look so i'd always prefer to to have it matte so um the quality is amazing the way you process the book is fantastic you download an application that goes onto your desktop and it allows you to pull all your images in and it gives you some guidance in terms of like if it's not fitting in if it is fitting in you send off the details it's all processed through the application and then they ship them to you via dhl 
um, it's all tracked, which is absolutely amazing. So I can't form that. So super, super, super happy and very grateful that I've now got a new updated portfolio. So in terms of how I've laid my portfolio out, I'm just gonna hold it here as I guide you through it. So first things first, the front page always has to be very captured. Like it, it has to grab people's attention. If I show you my first couple, so this is my first one, you know, try to be really clever about it. Just like this is a portfolio on a white background. It stands out. It's very clear what it is and, and very simple. My logo for my studio on the back there, fantastic. My original one, a brick wall with Lou Curtis photography, always trying to be really impactful and a little mushroom on the back. And this was a picture I took whilst traveling. I think I was in Venice at the time and it was amazing. It was just a total brick wall and down in the bottom corner was a mushroom. And I was like, do you know what? It was a really standout picture. So I thought I'd use that for, for the cover. So these are the old ones. Now the newer one, first page has to be impactful. So this is one of my favorite images from 2017. This is a picture of Hot Since 82 playing at a venue called Printworks in London. So Printworks is an old newspaper printing factory. Phenomenal, like absolutely, it's probably one of the best venues I've shot and, and partied in, in London. Like it's absolutely phenomenal. If you haven't been there, go there. It's amazing. The lights are unbelievable. And this is all, this is all the lights that are rigged up. So they had two lights coming down, key lights on the artist shot in a way that I could basically just pull out all the detail of him just playing and sort of span, spanning beyond here is a huge crowd. So for me it's a standout image and straight away it shows what I'm about, you know, it's all about music, it's all about entertainment and it's rich and, and colourful. On the back I've got another image, so this image is Lost Frequencies at Egg and it's a load of people, hands in the air, they're all dancing, loving life and again it just says what I'm about, you know, it's all about music and it's a very powerful image. And I think the way it correlates between the artist at the front and the crowd at the back is a real synergy between you know what I do. It's, it's you know very embedded in the music industry, at both the artist end and also the party's end. So that's the reason I chose those two images. If I scroll through, you can see the way that I've pulled these together. So this guy here is a DJ called uh, G W Harrison. He is a resident for Abode. Now Abode are a label that have taken off in the last couple of years. Like literally everything they touch turns to gold. Amazing. And I had the opportunity to shoot a range of their artists at Printworks again. So huge industrial site. Not many photographers have been able to shoot artists there. And we got the space for a day to be able to shoot in. And some of the images we see. So this guy here, what we've done is I've, I've used a projector. He's pressed against the, you know, stood against the wall, and I've laid the image coming from the projector over the top of him to shoot it. So you can quite clearly hear it sees. There's a lot of mood, um, and the same again with the A here that represents abode and the eyes. And this is two separate images, and I fused them together to create, you know, a very powerful lookbook, so to speak, of a, a singular eyes. You then move in further. This guy here is Nick Curley amazing DJ, one of my favourites, always smiling, you can get an idea of what he's about, and this was shot in Ibiza, and again, you know, two images to create a lookbook from the same shoot, you know, you've got one of him very casual over here, and another one of him laughing to camera, and what I've tried to do is mix up dark and light images, so I haven't had, because, you know, in the music industry, especially the dance music industry, a lot of artists like it dark and moody, so I didn't want my whole portfolio to be dark, you know, I wanted a bit of colour in there in life because I, you know, I think it's very important to have colour in life, as you can see from the front, you know, a mix of bright colours and also some, some dark as well. So what I've tried to do on each of these pages is have dark and also have light. So we then move into another dark. This guy here is Hector. So Hector's a very well-known Mexican DJ. He came over to play at Fabric and I'd shot him in the summer at Ibiza and he you know, specifically wanted to work with me again, which was a you know, huge accolade for me. Very, very proud that he wanted to come over and work with me again. So we hired a studio for half a day and we come away with some really powerful images. This shot's one of my favorites. On his knuckles, he's got tattooed self-made and I shot it in a way that those are in focus, his face is out of focus and the light is falling upon his knuckles. So I don't know if you can see, oh, the light is so bad because the sunlight is peering through. There you go. You see, get an idea for it. And on the other side, there's just one of him sort of like, you know, very stylized image, falls to a black background, which is pretty sweet. And again, goes from color to dark. When we move in further, this is another DJ slash producer I shot called Jack. We shot this up in Ipswich down by Marina. Just beautiful natural light coming in. So he was sat on the docks and just making use of his very punk grunge look to be able to produce some really powerful images. 
and which stand out in the music industry because you know everyone wants to be dark and you know you know all the rest of it and he has this really distinct look so it was great working with him another dj from the abode residency and this was shot on the same day like i shot the guy from the first one and what we did is they all have their own signs and we hung those from the ceiling stood the artist next to him a single light source coming from a beauty dish firing the light upon him everything in the background falls to black even though it wasn't there was quite a lot of ambient light in there we just used the iso to be able to do so um, and again a very powerful image to, to represent that then we move in even further this side you should hopefully know this guy this guy is david guetta and you know i'm a massive music fan i can't say like i'm overly like i go mad for sort of like david guetta stuff. i like my really sort of underground and quite heavy beats and, and a bit of disco phenomenal artist though but for me, this is one of the, the biggest accolades ever because he's probably one of the highest grossing DJs in the world. And I got the chance to shoot him at a hotel in Ibiza called Destino. Um, and it was just a really cool shoot. We didn't have much time. We made use of all the natural light available. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that, like, to be fair, because I've got David Guetta on my portfolio. Fantastic. This young lady here is Tinny. So Tinny is phenomenal, like she's so down to earth, so cool, really full of life and friendly. And again, we, you know, we got to shoot her and this was for a commission for DJ magazine and just showing the difference between, yes, you can do really moody and dark, but there's so much color in here, you know, so, so, so much color. Then we move into another one of the abode residents. And this is a label I've worked with quite a bit. Um, and I've worked with some of their artists on an individual basis and I've worked with all of them on a, on a joint basis. And I really like the eyes, like, they're good guys like this is um, Steph Steph's amazing and um, he is a DJ called article and he you know this shot we shot in the home studio very moody kind of uh, Assassin's Creed inspired so to speak and this one was shot on the same day like I shot the previous two this guy here is a model so um, his name's Jay so he was getting into modeling and needed somebody to shoot a portfolio with so I spent some time with him and shot a session outside and shot a session in the studio using those images he went off to go to agencies and now he's you know he's a fully paid model which is great for me because it shows the work i was able to produce with him got him in you know got him enough attention to be able to move into an agency i'm not saying you know i can turn people into professional models but i'm just saying the work was good enough to represent his look to be able to get more work which is phenomenal this is just a, a lookbook of different images and different styles that we've shot with him so some dark some moody high key low key just mixing up the whole look and what this does for me when I present this portfolio is people are like, oh, yeah, he's, he's very versatile in terms of what he can produce. He's very creative. He can shoot in studio. He can shoot in natural light. Um, so it does me favors. This guy here is a guy called Kish, uh, David Kish. Um, he's a you know a radio DJ and DJs at events. And this was shot in the home studio again. And it's heavily photoshopped to a certain degree to be able to get that effect. But again, it's one of those more creative images, very powerful. That's why I wanted to use it for a center spread. Then we move into some more of the abode guys. Um, this young lady is Ellie Cox, phenomenal DJ, like produces some great work. This guy here is Devstar, and again, making use of the projected A to highlight where he's from and pulling some real color into it. Then I've got Jay. So this was the location we shot in Shoreditch. And again, you know, really heavily influenced by sort of graffiti and color. And it shows that, you know, yeah, I'm happy to shoot low key, but I love a bit of color. Like I think, it's you know one of the best ways to shoot get as many colors in as possible joe so joe when i met joe he's a he's a producer and he said to me you know i, I hate my picture being taken you know Luke, you're gonna have a hard time to to come away with some images that i'm gonna like this for me is probably one of my favorite pictures um in a long time and the reason being is like we just chilled like we got to know each other we spoke and that's probably one of my core skills as a portrait photographer it's not about the kit, it's not about your technical ability when you're shooting portrait. For me, it's about breaking down the barrier between you and the person you're taking a picture of. And once you've done that, you start to realize who they are and you can pick your timing and, and understand the technology to be able to pick your timing correctly to be able to get the best from them. So Joe just stood against the wall and we were laughing and joking and, and like, you know, we've got become so familiar with each other he didn't really notice the camera so I just shot away you know and we come away with some images of him just laughing like being happy and, and captured his real spirit which for me very happy about and the one at the beginning with Nick Curley as well if I can go back here again that's very similar so I just was speaking to him I was like Nick what was the last thing that made you laugh 
and, and there you go. The instant reaction was his laugh because he, he, he straight away went back to that place. He laughed and smiled and, and we've got some energy from that shot. So let's get back to where we were. So yeah, we was looking at Joe. And uh, yeah, I'm super happy with those. So these were shot on location in Hackney Wick using a single light source again and just loads of life to them really. And that's what I'm all about. These, this set of images. So this is a guy called um, William. This is Santander and Sydney James. Um, so uh, Santander and Sydney, uh, Sydney Charles. So got them wrong. Um, and this was shot at a festival. So basically we had a black backdrop, single light source. We interviewed all these guys, but at the same time we'd done some press images for them, just so we had some stock images from the festival of all these artists. And this guy is super colorful, super, you know, and we, and we tried to pull that out, but had it very, you know, classical low key, just falling straight to black. So very rich colors and then straight to black. These guys again, shot under a single light source, maneuvered so, they're both in the light, but both out the light, and just because they played a B to B set, which is back to back. And the image I wanted to catch was because they're two separate artists. They they go about doing their own business, but on this set they played together. And for me, I wanted to bring them two together in that sense. So I used a single light source to to unify them. In that if, in that makes sense, if that makes sense. Uh, so Dan Dan Cowling. So this guy is a producer DJ, and we shot this in Shoreditch, and this was just like. Again, he said, oh, I hate my picture being taken. And we literally just found some cool locations and just shot away. I don't know if you can see some of oh, the sunlight pouring in is so bright. I'm so sorry. Um, there you go, that's probably better. Cool. So yeah, so we just shot these in Shoreditch. Loads and loads and loads and loads of color. He's wearing a super leery, bright pink jacket, but I think it worked for the shot. Um, and we're coming away with some really good images that he's, he's still using. Cool, so we've got this chap, so this chap is a producer, um, and this was shot in a studio, and it was making use of low key and high key. So I've got a low key shot here, and I've got a high key shot here that's edited to create a superimposed double exposure with colors in it. And again, that just shows my versatility as a photographer. So when I present this, people look through and go, oh my God, yeah, yeah, he's not just a, a black and white guy, or he's not just like a, you know, he has the ability to shoot multiple different looks, which is very powerful. And that is the end of the portfolio. And then closes down to hands in the air, lost frequencies at the back. And I think in summary, when I hand this over to potential clients, what they get from this is they can see how diverse my range of photography is. They can see that it's very inspired by the music industry. And they also get an idea of some of the artists that I've worked for. And that's very good because it's all about credibility to a certain degree. <clears throat> if I'm going to go shoot, you know, a, a huge international artist, they're going to want to see that I've worked with other huge international artists. And the reason they're going to want to see that is it's credibility and it's conviction, isn't it? You know, why would you gamble on somebody who hasn't been in this environment before? You'd want to make sure that the person you're employing or person you're commissioning to do the shot or do the shoot has the skills and the experience to do it. Um, and, and this is what the portfolio shows them. And sort of in you know, conclusion, if you're gonna take anything away from this video, have a portfolio. And I, and I mean, have a portfolio in all the formats that are available and relevant to yourself. When I first started, I had a portfolio on every, I had 500 pics. I had Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you name it, and it got it got unbearable to manage because there were so many different platforms to try and keep up to date. I worked out what ones were relevant to me, and I basically culled the rest of them. And now in terms of where my portrait exists, a website, an absolute must. So you need to have a website, and if I, you probably won't see because of the glare, but give me two seconds. Uh, so if I go onto here, what you should see, uh, if I go back, doo -doo -doo -doo, let me just put in my website, www.lukertis, so a little plug there, so it's www.lukertis.co.uk, takes you to my website, and the thing from this website, basically, your own website is a must, like 100% whatever platform you use, whether it's Wix, Format, a free version from Adobe, have your portfolio online because you want to be able to just put in the signature of your email, hand it over to people and make sure it's available all the time. 
and that's key because you know your clients might not work on the same time frame as you so having your port portfolio available all the time is absolutely crucial and also make sure your website links to all of your other platforms so as I was saying the formats that I use to present my portfolio my website Twitter Facebook Instagram and YouTube they're the ones I use because they're the ones that's relevant to me and it's key that you use ones that are relevant and don't overwork yourself trying to maintain all these different platforms when you're not getting a result from them. My most successful platform is Instagram. I love Instagram, you know, because Facebook you can add a load of text and you can really seriously plug stuff on it. And I think I think Instagram's success is because of that culture in Facebook. Like people are like, oh God, Facebook's getting a bit too commercial, man. Whereas Instagram, you can literally just scroll for ages and it on on the face value, it's just images. There's nothing more to it. If you click into it and read the text, of course it goes deeper, but on face value, it's just images. And for me, that's really powerful because I can present all my best work as just images. And if people land on my page, they go, oh yeah, that's cool, I like that. I'll click onto that and I'll go deeper into it. Whereas Facebook, sometimes it's a bit too pluggy. So, you know, I have to have it because it's one of the largest platforms, but Instagram would be my preferred. So take away from this video, platforms to have your own website, an up-to-date Instagram, an up-to-date Twitter, and an up-to-date Facebook, and a Facebook business page, not just a personal Facebook page, a Facebook business page. And the reason being is because, well, you're a professional, or you want to be a professional, you know, if you look at any professional company, they wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't be, um, I'm trying to think a good example, you, know, you, you wouldn't go to Richard Branson's Facebook page, would you? You'd go to the Virgin or Virgin Trains or Virgin Finance or, you know, you would go to the relevant business page and you want to present yourself as a professional. So have a professional business page. Um, and also, finally, make sure you get one of these printed. Print a portfolio. And if you're going to do it, a good place to do it would be sal-digital.co.uk. Um, and the reason I say that is really good quality, very good value for money, and there's always vouchers to come away of a good deal to be able to reduce the price of printing these. And reducing the price of printing these, the value of these is unbelievable. Like they're so, so, so valuable. So any money you can save on producing something that has so much value, it's just business sense. This is gonna generate you more money. If you can find a way to reduce the cost of this, then your margins are gonna be higher. It's business 101. Um, so hopefully that was useful. And if you like the video, or there's anything you want to take away from it or add some comments, please do stick them in the bottom. I'm always going to produce some more videos, um, but it'd be very nice if you'd like to subscribe and give me some hints on what sort of videos you would see. And hopefully um, I can produce something that benefits you guys. But thank you for your time. I really appreciate it and take care. Sorry about the sunlight coming through the window. It's literally so bright. Take care. Bye-bye.